Hi, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm here to talk about lubrication systems for frack pumps using the Graco G3 pump and the MSP divider valve system. In the family of G-series pumps, there are a lot of different varieties, and even within the name G3, there are several different forms. This is a G3 Pro, which is a real simple model that's just a basic pump. This is a G3 Max, and this is another G3 Max. This one has the four liter reservoir. These two are two liter reservoirs, and all of these are for grease, but we also offer oil reservoirs as an option, and on those reservoirs, there's a fill cap on the top of the reservoir to fill it with oil. The G3 Pro doesn't have any sensor inputs. You can see on the side, there aren't any inputs. This one only has a power connector. There aren't any other connectors on it. So the G3 Pro, if that's what your system uses, is just gonna be a timer essentially that just runs the lubrication system on time. This G3 Max has the DMS feature, which means it has a USB port. Then the power connector is below it. This is a vent valve connector, which when you're using an MSP, you don't use a vent valve. So this should actually have a cover on it if the port is there. On the other side, there's just one input for a proximity switch or cycle counter. This system is much more complicated in that it has multiple inputs. It still has this USB input because it has the data management system on this pump too. And it still has that vent valve connector that should be covered in this case. And then there's an input for machine count. Some frac systems put a proximity switch on the rotating shaft that counts rotations of that shaft and uses that to determine how often to run the lubrication system. Not all of them do that though, some of them just run on time. So here's the power input on this one. And then back here we have some more inputs for cycle counters. And this is an alarm output that uses another DIN Form A connector to give you an optional external light or maybe if you have a control system on your frack pump, this would be used to communicate any faults or warnings or anything else that the controller signals. This pump also has some parts added to the pump output. The pump element is just this metal hex. It's a piston pump that extends inside of the base. The base is made of a fiberglass reinforced nylon, and then there's a motor inside and a cam that drives that piston pump. On this unit, we've added a couple of fittings so that we can have a gauge and we can also have a relief valve. This relief valve is going to squirt grease or oil onto the ground or whatever's right below it if ever there's a blockage in the system. So we have a couple of fittings stacked up, pressure gauge, and then this ultimately is the outlet that's gonna go to the system. Another common component in these systems is a filter or strainer. This is a grease strainer. The lube outlet is up here. The lube inlet is actually in the back. There's a bleed screw on top. So whenever you change it or need to purge air out of the system, you can loosen the bleed screw and let out the air. This should typically be mounted vertically. You can mount it horizontally as well, but you never wanna mount it upside down with the big hex on the top because this is how you take the filter out to change it. And if it's mounted like this, any of the contamination that is on the old filter when you pull it out is just gonna fall back in there. The best, of course, is to have it just fall out the bottom. But if you have to mount it horizontally, that can work because then the contaminants typically come out with the old filter better than they would in this kind of an arrangement. And then from out of the filter, there's the MSP valve. There are different configurations of MSP. It's a modular design, so you can put, you can make these with three sections or eight sections or even as many as 11 sections. On a typical frac system, there's only gonna be typically three sections or five sections. And then on here we have the indicator pins. This one's set up with five sections for a quintuplex pump. So on the back we have plugs in all of the unused outlets, a, a visual cycle indicator that's gonna have some little rings that turn orange as the valve cycles and then there's a proximity switch here to give electronic feedback to the G3 Max pumps to let it know that it's cycling. And then the lubrication outlets are along this side. This can all be reversed. These could be the outlets and these could have the plugs, but ultimately this is set up for a quintuplex because it has five outlets. 
Three sections can be set up for a triplex or a quintuplex because if it's three single outlet sections, that would be for a triplex. If there are two twin outlets and one single outlet, then you're back to having a total of five outlets and that would be another setup for a quintuplex. Other than the hoses, one last component we can talk about real quickly is the cable that connects the proximity switch to the G3 Max pump. G3 Pro pumps do not have the inputs for cycle counting. So if you're using a G3 Pro, there'd be no reason to use a proximity switch, at least not to connect to the G3 anyway. But this cable is just an M12 cable that goes on to the prox switch. This cable happens to have a light on it, but not all cables have the light. And that's part of the reason for the visual indicator is because the light is just visual indication. Having a visual indicator makes it not as important to have the light. But then this is just gonna plug into the G3 and that's how the G3 knows that the valve is cycling. So then again, the hose would come out from here. It would go into the back of the filter. It would come out the front and it would go into the inlet port on the top of the MSP valve. And then out of the five outlet ports on a quintuplex, you're gonna have hoses or piping that run over to your frack pump cylinders. And typically there would be a check valve out at those cylinders just to keep the air purged and to keep contamination from getting back into the grease lines. That's how the system works. Let's take a closer look at what's going on inside of the divider valves and how they work in series with each other as a system. The fluid pressure and flow comes in through that port on the inlet and there's a hole that runs down the entire assembly that has pressure coming into the middle of the valve at all times. With this valve, we have all the pistons starting on the right, and it's showing the bottom valve basically just finished dispensing. So now as the pressure is coming in here, actually let's say it's coming in here and it's coming all the way around the right side of the first valve, this is where the pressure is actually pushing on the pistons. On these other ones, it's still pushing it against the right side and it's kind of stalled out there because it can't, it can't go any further to the right. So now on this one, the left one, you have low pressure here and high pressure here. So what do you think is gonna happen to this piston? It's gonna start shifting to the left because this pressure is pushing it leftwards. And now this flow is kind of a convoluted path, but it works its way all the way out to the right side of that first section. And as it continues to move, as flow continues to move through it, the oil or grease now works its way over to where this section here is open on the other side now. If Let's back up a second and see how here the pressure was actually cut off momentarily as this was closed. But now as we continue the pressure is coming in this side and now the path to the right side of the second piston is opened up and now that piston is going to start moving to the left as well and when that second piston moves to the left it dispenses on the left also and as this moves over now it opens the path to where the pressure is to the right side of the third piston and it's going to do the same thing it's going to dispense out the left and now we start over back at the top again where the pressure is on the left side of the piston and it's going to work its way all the way through the valve to come out the left outlet and same thing in reverse as the other side. This is what we mean when we say that a divider valve is series progressive. It progresses through the series of pistons. Let's take one more look at how all this happens. And that's one complete cycle. Now that it's reached the right side of that last valve, it's back where it started, and it'll start the whole process over again as long as flow continues to move through the valve with enough pressure to move the pistons and most pistons need less than 200 PSI to cycle them. They say third time's the charm, 
So let's look at this one last time. Here the pistons are moving from right to left. And now that all of the pistons have moved from the right side to the left side, we would say that it has completed a half a cycle or one half cycle. And now it starts over at the top again and they move all to the right. And now that they've all moved to the right, that has completed the full cycle. So once we start over again, it'll be a new cycle. So that's the internal workings of a divider valve. It's not black magic, but it is kind of complicated because you've got these notches in these pistons that are opening and closing ports to redirect the fluid through there. But that's why if you plug a hole or have a blockage, everything stops because whenever it reaches that blocked hole, the piston can't shift over and then you have to troubleshoot that and find the blockage because nothing is going to get oil or grease until you fix that blockage and get the whole valve cycling through its progressive series again. This has been just a quick overview of the components used in a frack pump system and some of the things you'll typically see. In a separate video, we'll get into troubleshooting and learn a little bit more about how the divider valves work and how to troubleshoot both the valves and the pumps and the filter.